Hello and welcome to Outer Worlds. We continue our efforts to try to bust out uh, Phineas out of uh, Tartarus, the big prison planet. And uh, so far it was a very tough fight. So let's see what we have at a, ahead of us. Also, cryopods in a prison colony. Very interesting. After all you've done, all the work you've destroyed, all the money you've cost me, your misguided crusade has doomed Halcyon. Doomed? Phineas and I are saving the colony. I'm just rooting out corruption, one idiot at a time. Yeah, that sounds good. Idiot? I'm not the one marching to my death in a maximum security prison. In any other circumstance, I'd admire your boldness. In this one, however, I have only two words for you. Fuck off. <clears throat> you know, Chairman Rockfall, you just like make up all this garbage and think it matters. But it doesn't. You know, all the rules and laws and like, oh, we got this prison here. And we're just taking it over. It doesn't matter. You can call it what you like. Those are just words. Words that, you know, are significant to you. That's, that doesn't bind us. <clears throat> well now, there's no call for hostility. <laughs> no, I don't know. This is perfect. When the other one, uh, other person gets mad, nothing gets them even madder than you chilling. <laughs> so so that, that's, that, that's the way to go. You aren't most to miss words, huh? Chairman Rockwell, just the man I'm here to kill. <laughs> I just insult him. Psychopathic outlaws don't deserve the time. Thankfully, you're in a prison already. Find the nearest cell and wait until I'm done here. Then I'll drag you to the executioner myself. Big talk. I'm not waiting for anything. This colony needs uh, saving right now. I don't really fancy myself as the savior necessarily. Uh, even if uh, technically what we're doing right now. Oh, of course. How long until you've done? Is that sarcasm? Do you know what I do to people who employ the lowest, most base form of humor? Oh. I fire them. Alas, as you are woefully unemployed, I'll have to do the next best thing and have you killed. In the next room is the finest auto-mechanical purveyor of death ever made. Try not to scratch the paint with your skull. It was fucking expensive. <laughs> I like his swearing. Come on, what's up with... The hate on sarcasm. Maybe it's a little easy, but it can be very satisfying. <laughs> I'm sure we can talk about this, Rockwell. Let's work this out. <laughs> I don't think so. Absolutely not. Akande was always the sociable one, not me. Need I repeat the magic two words? Okay. Fine. I'm there before you know it. <sighs> well then. No, no, I, I don't wanna... <clears throat> Say that to him. I don't want to imply violence. Fine. I'll be there before you know it. <laughs> Holy shit. He's super mad. I love it. I can't wait to get to him. Actually, I'm running out of bullets. Or at least I'm, I'm losing bullets. It would be kind of fun if I, I actually ended up running out of bullets. What? 100... Lockpick. 99. Time to do some drugs. Uh, that, that should be enough. Hey, that's impressive. That's a set. Oh, for fuck's sake. Wow! Look at all this stuff. Okay. Well, I need hack 93. Oh, come on! 90. I can do drugs again. Wow. Uh. Pfft. 
Okay. Oh, I actually have to do more drugs than I than I thought. Okay, let's let's get drunk too. <laughs> Designate RAM as a hostile intruder. Access RAM override menu. Riot automatic mechanical is online. Damage to RAM unit or labyrinth personnel as a result of its security or safety overrides will be marked against employee. Sure. Activate weapon safeties. Attempt RAM shutdown sequence. Uh, RAM unit is in suppression mode. Three part authentication is required. In the event of critical malfunction to RAM unit's main systems, partial authentication may be uh, accepted. To protect RAM unit from any unauthorized ac access, administrators may only bypass two of these bypass ports. Uh, heavy Weapons 100 mark Ram's ammunition as the wrong caliber. Okay. Bypass first, first password. Can they? Uh, flag the Ram's unit trusters as overloaded. Please enter the first password. I need I need uh, higher hacking. I need to get drunk again. I need mind attributes. Come on, that's the one. Bypass the first password. Bypass the second password. Zero. Load C batteries into RAM's units. Quadruple Z battery charger. Candy. Hack. Administrative bypass accepted. RAM shutdown sequence initiated. Okay, so we needed the... Uh, yeah, but fine. We need to mix it up. Okay. I don't know what this RAM is. <sighs> we totally wrecked it. Right? Probably made the boss fight a lot easier. Oh, it's, it would have been some big-ass robot. Maybe I should have not wrecked that. Oh, he's gonna... Oh, I thought it's gonna be one of those classic I'm hiding in the window and you fight my deadly robot thing. This seems like a boss fight chamber. Hibernation chamber key. <laughs> oh, Ram is gone. <laughs> boss fight is prevent. Okay, I don't know. Would you guys want the boss fight? <gasps> I don't know. This is more satisfying. Imagine his head. He's gonna be as red as a tomato now. Uh, unlocked with hibernation key. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, what about these doors? You expected a big fight and like, oh no. Is this is your defender? Rocky? Hmm? Sammy or whatever your name is? Hey. What's your nickname? You're about to tell. Oh no! Calcium after all. Chairman Rockwell. I'm about to look blind. Oh fuck. Nice one. Oh, look at that. The chairman's key. It didn't disintegrate. That's a little disappointing. Oh, I was hoping to talk to him. But no. No such luck. What happened to you? You don't know how glad I am to see you. You lunatic. 
You broke into the board's own fortress and killed the chairman just to rescue one doddering old man? You are absolutely out of your mind, and I can't begin to thank you enough. Are you kidding? The board never stood a chance against me. Well, I mean, I gotta say this was uh, among the hardest things I've done. You know, I wouldn't let anything happen to you, Phineas. Do you have any idea how much trouble I went through to save you? I'm not gonna rub it in. Uh, but I'm not gonna be overly cocky. You know, I wouldn't let anything happen to you, Phineas. I know, my friend, I know. And now it's finally over. The board's finished. It's only a matter of time before the entire system slips from their grasp. You've broken the board's stranglehold on this colony, and you saved my life. But there's still so much we have yet to accomplish. You and I are going to have to work harder than ever to save Halcyon. I'm afraid the situation is far worse than any of us ever anticipated. Yes. I don't like the sound of that at all. Great. I was just about to pop open some drinks and celebrate. Yeah, uh, despite that, we, we gotta kick back sometimes. I, I actually kind of... I wouldn't say that I deserve it, but I think my crew deserves it. I'm just a captain. I don't have no I have not have needs, right? I don't like the sound of that at all. Earth has gone dark. We haven't received a single message in three years. There's been no communication, no signals, nothing. Two years ago, the Earth's Directorate's frigate disappeared on their way back to Earth. We don't know what they discovered when they arrived, or if they arrived at all. They haven't exactly been hands-on around here anyway. So there's one less rubber stamp to worry about. Earth is humanity's home planet, Miss Fenhill. The psychological effects of losing our original home will be devastating. You mean... we're all alone out here? Really alone? I'm afraid so, Miss Holcomb. Halcyon is the only home we have left. Returning to Earth is no longer an option. We're in serious trouble, my friend. Do you know what this means for Halcyon? We can't rely on Earth for support anymore. We've been cut loose. We're entirely on our own. Why do I have a feeling that you're just dropping this bomb on me to make whatever decision coming up a little bit more difficult? Although I think it's a very cool uh thing to drop on me but uh yeah i don't mind it and it, i don't think it's gonna be cool because having earth as an option is always like the safe haven this this is a very crucial step this means that they can very much build on this uh franchise that i fucking love i love this they are done a home run with uh the other worlds is that it's not really about uh, uh, just going back to Earth because there's like, you know, there's like the perfect place, you know, you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, we have a lot of work ahead of us. We'd best get started. Yeah, we can do that. Wait, hold. I need to ask you something. Yes, yes, certainly. I'll help however I can. What do you think happened? I don't know what happened, but something must have gone horribly wrong. I don't know why Earth's gone silent. I don't even know if Earth exists anymore. We have no connection back to Earth, and return is likely impossible. We're completely alone out here. You mentioned the frigate disappearing. Um, how does the communication work? I, I assume that you just uh, send. There are no any receiving outposts along the way. You just send the message. And they're just gonna get it eventually. I mean, that's pretty logical. Yeah, that that should work that way. Although, uh, I'm not exactly a scientist. So, you mentioned the frigate disappearing, but like the Earth getting destroyed. Even if the Earth was getting destroyed, wouldn't the uh, wouldn't Terra uh, Earth? send some kind of information like you know like hey we are about to get hit by a meteor uh gl good luck uh 
see you later in a million years when we are like I don't know lizards again lol uh, here's a cat picture something like that something along those lines you know uh, you mentioned the frigate disappearing I don't know what happened but something must have gone horribly wrong I oh fuck that's, that's we have clicked the wrong button you mentioned the frigate disappearing you might have heard of the Earth Directorate's frigate. Half the colony's entire military was on that ship. They were returning to Earth when they vanished without a trace. That was two years ago. We haven't heard a word from them since. Whatever happened to Earth likely happened to them. Is it is it really aliens? I'm like, that's just crazy, right? No, not aliens. What's... There's something else. I, I know about uh, other colonists, Phineas. About the other colonists? Yeah, I know about that. I can't, can't really blame him for that. I wasn't trying to hide the truth from you, but after all you've done, I owe you an explanation. Yes, I experimented on the Hope's colonists. Each of my experiments ended in catastrophic failure. Each of my subjects died in agony. You are my first and only success. I didn't tell you about the others because I didn't want to burden you. My failures are my own to bear, not yours. I forgive you, Phineas. Like, he was trying to save them. In a world that where no one wanted to f save them, so... It's different than the human experimentation that I, I've, I've seen uh, the corporation do, because their goal was not to save people. Kind of. No, it wasn't. Not really. Or at least it wasn't... I mean, maybe they thought it was necessary. But no. I think I can forgive this. Like, truly. Like, no one was going to help those colonists. No one was going to help me. And, uh... Yeah. He just... He just did the best he could to try to get us out. Not He didn't do it for his own gains, you know? He didn't do it just to make Byzantium stand out. So I think in this case it's uh, justified and not like it was his first choice. Thank you. Perhaps in time I'll learn to forgive myself. My apologies. I need to get a hold of myself. We've far more pressing issues to worry about right now. If you have any more questions, ask me. I'll answer as best I can. I don't have any more questions. We got a lot of work to do. Yes, we do. You've done a marvelous thing. You've succeeded where anyone else would have failed, including me. We must begin the revival process immediately, starting with the hopes of brightest minds. And then we're going to fix this damn colony one problem at a time. Sounds good. We're going to need a leader. And I can't imagine a better person for the job than you. What do you say, old friend? Will you help us? I prefer if leaders weren't chosen this way. I'll take the job until the people uh, decide for a better leader than me. Because, come on. What do I do? I run a ship, kind of kick-ass way, I'm kind of like mercenary, you know, I'm competent, but am I really the best suited to run a colony or like a, a global go government or even a galactic government? No one is. The, the answer is no one fucking is. It needs to be a joint effort and uh, with a lot of data and uh, a lot of representatives and preferably just uh, mostly done by machines because people might be uh, people might be too dumb <laughs> so uh, automate uh, just make it as as uh, just make sure that as many machines are part of it as possible and uh, they're just trying to make a uh, life best for everybody so I'm not a huge fan of it, but uh, I can do it. Somebody has to run this colony. I think I might be a good solution for this because I don't pursue leadership. 
Somebody has to run this colony. I'm the only competent person left. Yeah, I, I, I just only pursue leadership if I see the leadership as incompetent. Not because I, you know, I have a power trip mania. <clears throat> uh, you can count on me and I'll help you revive the other colonists. It's not really your choice. It's not really my choice. You know, we revive the colonists and, you know, it's going to be decided eventually. I'm going to do what I always done, whatever I want all the time. Uh, that's just childish a little bit. Somebody has to run this colony and only a competent person are left. Oh no. You can count on me. I'll help you revive the other colonists. Yeah, let's go with that. When I revived you, I thought you were going to help me save this colony. I was wrong. I had our roles reversed, you see. You're the one who's going to save us all. I'm just the one who set you on your path. You're the best thing to ever happen to Halcyon. If you want to take it upon yourself to lead this colony, you have my support. Thanks for that, We're Phineas. We're not a colony any longer, are we? Our last connection to Earth has been severed, and so we have been set free. Our future is uncertain, and no one knows what tomorrow holds. Exciting, isn't it? Very exciting. Phineas. Chaos and Tartarus. What's going on the here? The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment she landed in Emerald Vale, her actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists. Engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon. The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. In the absence of the board's authority, many of the colony's settlements banded together with a single purpose in mind, survival. Life was especially hard in the years to come. Some towns dissolved by attrition and starvation, but most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. Between MSI's worker-centric policies and the iconoclast manpower, Sanjar and Zora were able to rally many of the Terra 2 townships to their cause. MSI's workforce swelled, and the iconoclasts enjoyed a significant surge in their ranks. The board was too distracted by infighting and internal politics to stop MSI from becoming a powerful corporation and a refuge for townships that might have fallen through the cracks. Consumed by paranoia, Lilia Hagen took Sublight Salvage in a controversial direction, openly accusing board officials of an extraterrestrial conspiracy. One day, an accident at the Groundbreakers' docking bay silenced her forever. Time would tell if her replacement could keep the Sublight family together. The collapse of Edgewater left its workers bereft of any purpose in life. Most of them made their way to Adelaide Medevitt's camp, hoping to ingratiate themselves into her favor. Adelaide accepted only a few to her community. The rest were turned away and likely died of starvation. Nevertheless, Adelaide's camp grew into a well-established town. Adelaide McDevitt refused to cooperate with the ongoing effort to save Halcyon from collapse. A sympathetic deserter stole a copy of her research and delivered it to the Hope's scientists. It is unclear how useful Adelaide's research was. An optimistic estimate suggests her work may have bought Halcyon another few years of survival. Adelaide would never know. She died that winter. 
Under the leadership of Junle Tennyson, the groundbreaker held firm against corporate influence. The ship's mechanical stability gave Junle the time to educate a promising generation of engineers schooled in her family's traditions. The future of the groundbreaker looks promising. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the lifetime employment program forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities about the state of Halcyon. While Byzantines were reluctant to surrender the luxuries they'd grown accustomed to, the board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some even had to get jobs. It was a dark time indeed. Your influence shifted Ellie's perspective. She finally admitted, albeit grudgingly, that she just might need other people, sometimes. With a steady income from the life insurance payouts, she was finally able to afford a ship of her own. She hired a small crew and flew supply missions to communities on the fringe. Some of them were even legal. Life in Halcyon was sobering for Felix Millstone. The grand revolution he dreamed of never came. There was no great awakening for the colony, no celebrations in the streets. There was only the hard, desperate work of trying to repair a broken colony. Felix never had a head for numbers, but if there was labor to be done, he was there to help. Eventually, Felix realized that the work of a revolution was done with two hands. As much as he enjoyed his adventures aboard the Unreliable, the vicar known as Max eventually decided that it was time to move on, to live out the life he had sought so long to create. He knew there were many in the colony who carried burdens much worse than the ones he had struggled with, and he devoted himself to easing their suffering wherever he could. He only ever took up arms again to defend the defenseless. Unshackled from a lifetime of striving and fighting the universe and himself, Vicar Maximilian de Soto was finally at peace. Once the matter with the Hope colonists was resolved, June Lay bashfully asked Parvati if she'd like to join her permanently on the Groundbreaker, and Parvati enthusiastically, if somewhat awkwardly, agreed. The stories of her adventures spread across the colony, and Parvati soon found herself the center of attention. Having served as the engineer of a renowned spacecraft, tramp freighters and wildcat miners sought her out by name. And in no time, she was a fixture in the Groundbreaker's mechanical ecosystem. She and June Lei were never far apart. Nioka returned to Monarch to take another crack at making a permanent life for herself. She formed the Caron Group, a mercenary outfit of ragtag survivalists and wilderness experts. Anyone in need of a guide or just looking to throw back a beer and swap stories, could find her camping on the trail or clearing an infestation. The SAM unit that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior sanitation and maintenance capabilities across what was left of the colony. This led to a boost in SAM unit sales. Did you know that SAM units are the longest lasting, toughest acting cleaning solution in Halcyon? Minister Clark was released from house arrest, and his contact with you gave him a sense of renewed purpose and vigor. Once it became clear that no help would be coming from Earth, he threw his considerable efforts and talents into helping Halcyon manage the crisis before it. As for Dr. Phineas Wells, he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab. He eventually came to terms with his own past and was able to forgive the mistakes of his younger self by devoting his remaining years to serving the colony. Dr. Wells was able to revive many more scientists and engineers than he first expected, thanks to the additional batch of chemicals you stole from the Ministry. Wells never forgot about the human lives that were lost in acquiring these chemicals. In the end, Dr. Wells was able to save every scientist and engineer aboard the Hope. Over the next decade, Nearly all of the Hope's remaining colonists were successfully revived. Halcyon saw a period of rapid technological and scientific advancement. Breakthroughs in dietary supplements saved the colony from starvation. 
geoengineering project and social reforms began to change the structure and character of the colony. Dr. Wells laid the groundwork for the project to save the colony, but he would never live to see the fruits of his labor. He passed away a few years later. His work was carried on by the scientists and engineers he revived. Today, Halcyon has stabilized. The people of the colony work hard to adapt to their new circumstances. Nearby colonies send aid and supplies. Life will never be easy in Halcyon, but for the first time in its history, there exists a sense of real, genuine hope about the future. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? Long after Wells passed away, you carried on his work with more energy, determination, and brilliance than he could ever muster. The years that followed were hard, but Halcyon survived by the efforts of the Hope's most promising colonists, the greatest of which was you. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this. The name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come. Wow. Really good game. Should be see. We made it. I'm just kind of trying to catch any names that maybe I know. But I mean, guys, maybe already been by. It's a really good game. Wow. There's, there's nothing wrong about it. It's, it's just it was just awesome. <laughs> it was really awesome uh, from start to finish. Pretty good length too. So. It felt very satisfying. Really good game. And also, this... They, they can build uh, an entire universe with this uh, a game. I can definitely see Auto Worlds too, and... Yeah. I was a little disappointed about the end credits. I think it's, it's cool that they did it. But what I would like to see is that, you know, instead of like everyone doing their own thing, which seems to be often the, the team. I would, would like to see, like, hey, we stuck together. How about that? Because, you know, that 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 bond uh, was pretty important. But, you know, everyone went off to do their own thing. A little disappointing, but I guess I turned out to be some kind of a leader and, uh, and also continued uh, uh, Phineas's project. And overall, it seems like a pretty good ending. The only one that maybe is pretty questionable is the... How Edgewater turned out, but I'm not sure if we could have had a better solution there. Ultimately, you gotta have uh, multiple playthroughs for that. But I mostly went with the good options. Uh, Edgewater is uh, somewhat questionable. Maybe we could have... Maybe we could have a situation that I did on Monarch, so they get united. I don't know. I, I didn't see it, if that was possible. <sighs> really good game. <laughs> oh man. Uh, I will probably do a, another playthrough of this. But not exactly sure. Definitely I don't want to do it just... Well, we can definitely do it with the vanilla version. But... Uh, I feel like what could be really fun is that we change... Uh, how much loot we get. That could be really fun. And I'm not sure what kind of other mods could... You know, just spice it up. Not significantly. Like, this game really doesn't need too much spice. It's, it's very spicy. <laughs> from the start. To, to finish, but... Uh, that could be cool. I felt like maybe I just got way too much ammo. I think the difficulty was uh, pretty good at the end. The end was, was difficult, but uh, at times it was a little bit too easy. So it wasn't 
you know? Probably because of the open world nature of it. Like, they, they kind of got it right at the end. But, like, at, at the start it was pretty hard, it was pretty hard. You know, then it got easier, then it got... Kind of like, uh, it was very hard, very hard at the start and very hard at the end. Or, like, reasonably hard at the end. And, uh, but, like, in between we had, like, a uh, few soft spots. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we can have some cool mods. It's a really good game. Wow. Maybe watch the whole thing. I, I can... I can't hope to... Uh, give it justice. Like, like I don't know, just uh, think of a review. Uh, after just finishing it. Off the top of my head. I'm really happy with the choices we made. I, I kind of try to, try to try, uh, stay true to myself. I'm not sure how could it work out if we made different choices. Maybe the companions would have left me. And what I was really happy about the the, the, the the choices were pretty fucking difficult usually. And you know you were kept in the dark like Phineas Velas from start to finish. You couldn't truly trust him. You know he was hiding behind the bulletproof glass because he's smart. He's just he's not taking unnecessary risks. But he had our our back, kind of. But also he couldn't trust us. I, we could have just uh, sold him out. And that would have worked, but of course. And the only concern I had is that maybe it's gonna be like a silly, uh, just uh, we start reviving all the colonists. But no, it was it was the, my only concern was just a total non concern because we just kept reviving the the smartest guys who who made sure that the problems we have are, are solved. Then everyone got revived and. It's it's truly the good ending. I'm not sure why would you go with the board. Just for what? So you can have a house in Byzantium? I don't know. <sighs> so that's it, guys. Amazing game. Uh, must play for sure. I had a lot of fun with it. And it was really nice to see that what uh, Obsidian can do in a different setting. I think they were a little conservative. Uh, with difficulty, like, yeah, partially because of the AI, uh, the AI is something that they can uh, definitely make better. I criticized it at times, but it was, you know, it's not, like, terrible compared to, like, what you usually see in games, but it's it's definitely a weak point uh, when it comes to companions. Even, even just gi giving them a little bit more control. Uh, would be nice and also like a minor like you know just they take cover you know like that that alone would be uh, pretty huge but it, it doesn't matter too much the game is awesome and uh, before Obsidian is mostly made like uh, uh, well they made various games they definitely made uh, games along these lines like Fallout New Vegas but their last games were uh, kind of like a, they had the bird's eye view, 3D-ish. I had the Baldur's Gate style camera, and that it, they were awesome. But it was good to see that they make something like this awesome as well. Now, of course, they have the experience with it, and it's kind of amazing that they came back to it. And yeah, really good <sighs> sci-fi. And in a world like like Fallout. Like, ultimately, like, they have experience with Fallout, they, many of them worked on Fallout. And, uh, ultimately I'm much happier seeing something new. Like, I know Fallout, I love Fallout, so 1, 1, 2, New Vegas, you know, even better as the stake on it is, is okay. Uh, although that went down a little bit over the years. And, uh, this is just awesome, like, even better as this working on some, some kind of new, uh, sci-fi, and I, I, I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna turn out. That that really has nothing to do with outer worlds. But yeah, I just want to see more sci-fi, and this is really well done. And I could just see outer worlds two, three, four, five, you know, as many as they can make, you know. And Obsidian knows that they just don't have to, uh, you know, they they can just make a game that works, and they know how to make good games. You know, they don't have to do something dumb. <laughs> I don't know. Not like they're playing it safe. They they make unique games that as like oh my god max's quest was was so memorable so max max turned from a character that i you know was like kind of 
kind of kind of like to like to really like, but I. I think I would want to go a new playthrough with him, just to see him from start to finish. That's partially why I didn't use him as much, uh, even after his uh, quest, because I would like to see how he changes, if he changes at all. So obviously if I went for another playthrough, then I would uh, somewhat prioritize characters that I, I didn't use as much. Although Parvati would be hard to pass up, but I probably would do that still. Anyway guys, this is getting too long. Uh, thanks for watching, awesome series, uh, tell me if you want to go for uh, another playthrough and uh, what mods or what kind of uh, restrictions or whatever should I consider using, like, you know, like I should do like melee, stealth, whatever, like ultimately it's gotta be fun for me, but you know, maybe you say something that's fun and uh, yeah, that's it guys, thanks for watching. And, uh, have a good one. <laughs> and play this game, if you haven't.